just put a new uh, little protective cover over it. Gives it a bit more shine. Yeah, I think pretty good for the price. And if it skips, I'm not gonna be surprised. You know, I'm not gonna be disappointed. Hey everybody, this is TJR. And Superfan. It's Thanksgiving weekend, and Superfan and I thought we would go to Amoeba Records. I had uh, a lot of Blu-rays and DVDs I wanted to get rid of. This is part of that whole media purge I was talking about. So I just put that in a box and we, we took it up there and we decided, and you know, basically uh, decided to unload them there. So first, uh, let's just do the Amoeba Hall here, Amoeba Records in Los Angeles. And uh, picked up a few new and used records, both of us here. Uh, first here is America's First Album. Uh, this, is a, this is a used album. And um, this has always been a great record. I have this on CD, but I don't have it on vinyl. I've never owned it on vinyl. And this is, of course, a, um, a pressing from the 70s. Not sure exactly if it's first or second or what, but, or any of that, but I just know it is from the 70s. So... Very uh, interested in checking that out. Um, also, we got some new stuff here. Um, let's see here. But before the new stuff, I picked up Heart, Magazine by Heart. This is another used record here, but it's sealed. This is a 70s uh, a pressing here. This is not a, uh, a re-release or anything like that. And I've always liked this album. This album's gotten kind of a bad rap, I think, sometimes. But I think it's really good. And it was, you know, fairly inexpensive, and it's never been opened. And so I thought, cool. Now, we got some new stuff here. Um, I got this repressing here, this new uh, pressing of Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. I used to have this album on vinyl a very long, long, long time ago, back when it was first around. Um, and, of course, later, as, as I got older, got rid of it, and then just got the CD. So it's good to have this one back on vinyl again. This has always been a real favorite of mine. Produced by Bob Ezrin, who produced Kiss's Destroyer album, Pink Floyd's The Wall, and just a real favorite of mine. So looking forward to checking that out on vinyl. And let's see here, and, and Superfan. Superfan picked up this. This is the latest album by Duran Duran, entitled Future Past. We listened to this on streaming. She liked it a lot. and. She must have liked it quite a bit because she got it on vinyl. Yes, I thought I did. it <laughs> good for you. And anyways, there it is. I enjoyed it too. It was a pretty good album, I thought. And then we got two more used albums here. Um, I picked this one up here. This one was like really inexpensive. It was only a buck ninety-nine. This is Pirates by Ricky Lee Jones. And I, of course, bought this album back on vinyl back when it came out back in the day. And then later on, let it go, picked it up on CD. Now, I do happen to have one of those MoFi pressings of this album that I found on special because there was a little bit of damage to the jacket, but I bought it brand new. And this one I found here was in such excellent condition. It looks like it's brand new, except for the tag that they stuck on there to, you know, to sell it. But it looks brand new here. I looked at the disc. The disc looks beautiful. And yeah, I have that MoFi pressing of it, you know, but I just thought, I'm just going to pick this up. I'm just kind of, for two bucks, yeah, I'm just going to pick it up and I'm going to listen to it. And honestly, I'm going to compare it to that MoFi pressing. I just want to see how much difference I really hear between the two. Maybe I'll do a shootout video where I talk about it and the CD. But it was in such great shape. I couldn't, I just, two bucks, just not going to pass it up. Now, finally, I found this used and kind of surprised Considering how expensive used vinyl is getting, I mean, that Ricky Lee Jones album aside was kind of uh, more the exception these days and not the rule. Considering how expensive used vinyl is getting, I was kind of shocked to see this. This is, oh, it's upside down. This is their Satanic Majesty's Request, the Rolling Stones, but this is with the original hologram cover. And the price tag was... 22 bucks and some change, about 23 bucks. I mean, it says here, it's written on the plastic bag here somewhere. So I assume the record may not be in the best of shape. But I have, of course, the, the anniversary edition 
where they remastered it and where they restored the, the, you know, the hologram cover. But I was kind of surprised just because this always seems to be such a rare collector's item that it would be, you know, basically roughly about 23 bucks. Maybe the record's in really bad shape. And if it is, that's okay. I kind of picked it up more just for the novelty and of having this kind of a collector's item. Yeah, that's kind of a cool cover. And yeah, the... yeah. It just, just to have it is very cool, you know? And I, I would open it up right now, but it seems like it's kind of not, not, not tape sealed, but like sealed sealed. So maybe a little work taking that off. Uh, maybe we'll take this off and then come right back. Okay, we're back and we've, uh, with the help of this wonderful invention called scissors, uh, we've opened up the plastic uh, wrap here for it. And so here it is. And it's, you know, there's the hologram cover. You can kind of see the heads moving. And not sure here how well I can see, if I can see the Beatles heads on the flowers. Well, you... It's pretty worn out. I mean, this is, this is a kind of a worn copy, but all in all, it doesn't look too bad in my opinion. No, I don't see the Beatles heads on the flowers there. Um, let's open it up here. We've got like a gatefold here. There we go. Let's take a look at the record. There's the sleeve. I recognize this, of course, from my anniversary edition I have of this. I have the anniversary edition. But here's the record here. And let's take a look. I'm just going to glance at it here. Uh, yeah, I can see what looks like there might be some scratches on it. I'm still going to play it and check it out. But it's not like, eh, actually, wait, now as I look at it a little more, yeah, I can see definitely what looks like more scratches on it. Though, who knows? I have seen records with lots of scratches that are perfectly playable. You never know sometimes. And then I've seen records really clean where it has like a, bit, a bad pop on it or a bad skip. You never know sometimes. Well, you bought it for the cover, really. I know. Yeah, I bought it for the collector's item, just for the collectability of it. Because, I mean, you just... Normally, whenever I've seen a copy of this with the hologram cover, the original hologram cover, it's pretty darn expensive, you know? Uh, also, I can see here, there's some tape here on the edges of this. This has been kind of taped over with some scotch tape. So that's another thing. Well, yeah, you couldn't see that in the packaging the way they had it. Yeah, but that's okay. I mean, that's, you know, like I said, it's 23 bucks. I mean, it, like I said, this album... Generally, when I find it at a record store, used record store, it's freaking expensive. Like how much? Um, the cheapest I've seen maybe is 75 bucks. You know? Yeah, see their heads turning? There we go. Yeah, but still, I think this looks pretty darn good. I mean, I have here the anniversary edition here that I picked up that came out a couple years back. And... You can see the difference in how much cleaner it looks. But this is the first time that the hologram has been restored to the cover since the 60s when it first came out. This was an expanded edition that contains two CDs, two LPs, and a, uh, a small book as well. Um, but yeah, I figured it would be great to have one an original because it is such a rare collectible. And once again, Considering how expensive used vinyl is starting to get, there wasn't, it wasn't that long ago when you could buy used vinyl, for the most part, pretty inexpensively. And I'm noticing the prices are starting to really go up. It's kind of putting a real ding into the hobby, so to speak. And I've heard other uh, YouTubers who, whose channels are more exclusively devoted to vinyl collecting say that a similar thing. Though there are still good deals to be had out there. Um, but anyways, though, that's the Amoeba Hall. Okay, it's been a couple weeks now since that Thanksgiving haul, and I thought I'd follow up and tell you what I thought about the purchases I made. And hanging out with me is super fan, who's having breakfast. Hey, everybody. So to start off here, I'm going to do my first ever MoFi comparison. I've never done one of these before because I only own one MoFi recording. 
Uh, these are expensive, and I happened to get this one on eBay from a seller who had it brand new. Uh, it was discounted in price because there was some damage to the to the the jacket, uh, but no damage to the record. Rick Pirates by Ricky Lee Jones is an extremely important album in my life, and also her first album, uh, her self titled first album, which I did an entire video on. If you want to check that out. At any rate, though, this is the Mofi right here, and as you know, I picked up this original pressing here. Um, from the early 80s. And this was in excellent shape. Uh, like I said before, it was brand new looking. And I compared the two. My verdict was that indeed, the Mofi pressing was a little bit better sounding. There was richer detail to it. It is better. Uh, but I was still really impressed with just how good this sounded. Um, excellent. Like I said, but the record was in great shape. It was very clean, um, almost uh, no snap, crackle, pop in it. Very little, if any at all. Um, was really impressed with the quality of it. So I'm going to keep this. It was only two bucks. You know, this was, like I said, um, vinyl, used vinyl is getting so expensive, but this was an exception here. Probably because there's not a lot of demand for this album. Oftentimes, people will say to me, um, if I say I haven't heard a particular album, they say, well, I can't believe you never heard that. Well, you have to remember, everybody's musical journey is different. We all discover things at different times. Ricky Lee Jones's first two albums are two of the most important albums in my life. Yet I know if I ask you, you know, are you familiar with these albums? Most people are going to say to me, no. In fact, who is she? I'll mention that she had the hit single Chucky's in Love in the 70s. And they might say, oh, yeah, I remember who she is now. And that's about the extent of it. At any rate, though, um, so I, I was really impressed with this, uh, with this uh, $2 purchase. That was well worth the two bucks. Uh, so next, we have America, their first album. I was a little nervous about this one because it was a bit expensive. It was about 17 bucks or so. It was, they sealed it at Amoeba. And they do that when they've got a really good pressing and they don't want a lot of people opening it up and pawing over it. They've judged that this is a good pressing and the, the fact that we're sealing it means that, you know, you can trust it. And so I, I pulled it out. I have it on CD, of course. I have a CD pressing here. Um, CD pressing, did I just say that? I don't know. I have no idea if that's the right term. If it's not, I'm sure there's some annoying audiophile out there who will who will make sure that I get I stand corrected. Uh, at any rate, though, I put this on, and in about 30 seconds, I was just blown away. It just sounded so rich and beautiful. And it was with this album that I thought to myself, you know, I think I really need to start looking for more used vinyl originally when I started my vinyl journey, it was all, I was buying new pressings mostly. But now, of course, now that, you know, stores are open again, um, you know, I am going out and starting to buy used vinyl and just overall, for the most part, being real impressed. Um, and this really kind of clinched it for me. I just heard it. I thought, wow, this sounds great. I did compare it to the CD I did feel that this, uh, this vinyl here was uh, richer sounding than the CD. Um, the CD sounding a little bit more sterile. It's still good sounding, but a little bit more sterile when compared to this. And so I was very pleased with that. Um, next, we have Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. This is a new pressing. Um, it's on clear vinyl. And... Uh, my, of course, version is an older CD release of it here. A long time ago, I had this on vinyl. I inherited it from one of my sisters, actually. And um, that's a long story. I won't get into it here. But um, I listened to it. I compared. Um, I thought that this record here, this new pressing, was a little bit better sounding than this CD. But this CD sounds really good still. Um and like I said, this is an older one. I do know, of course, that this is from a new remaster. And there was a companion CD remaster release with it, which I don't have. So I couldn't compare the two together. Um, I'm willing to bet, even though I have no information on it, 
that this one was probably digitally sourced, this remaster. Sounds really good though. Like I said, it was a little bit better, I thought, than this. But then again, I didn't compare it to the CD remaster, uh, which I intend to get at some point because it has some bonus tracks. But still was pleased with this. Um, and it's and this is a reasonably priced album. If you look at if you look for it out there online, you'll find that it's pretty reasonably priced for a new new album. Uh, so there we go. That was Alice Cooper. And next we have Heart Magazine. And I love Heart. I I don't have any of their albums on vinyl until now. This is the first one I've ever gotten on vinyl. I've owned them all on CD. This was their second album. I'll be honest, while I uh, I listened to all the hard albums and liked them, I wasn't aware of the whole controversy surrounding this second album here and uh, how it was, you know, uh, how this led to them leaving the Mushroom label. Uh, you can read it all. I'm not going to go into it right here. But I was I, I just, while researching this, I learned a bit about the whole situation, how it was released initially with a different track listing in a way that the band was not happy with. And this is, of course, the corrected version. But uh, at any rate, though, um, this, of course, was sealed. Although it was, you know, a 70s release sealed still. And it was one of those ones where they had the little corner cut out here, one of those promo copies, but it was never opened. So it was very, very clean sounding. It sounded great. I compared it to this CD here that I own. And this is just, I want to show you this. This is just one of those budget CD releases. Uh, you know, this is all you get inside. Um, I don't think this is probably any kind of special remastering or anything. And I'll be honest, um, there was almost no difference in my opinion between this and this. These both sounded about the same. They both sounded really good. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'm... I've, I paid 10 bucks for this. Um, I might, well, I'm gonna keep it for now. But considering that the CD was, there wasn't that much difference, I could at some point end up trading this one for something else maybe, um, make some room for other records and just hold on to this. But I'm definitely holding on to this CD here. Um, so that was Heart. Um, but I do wanna get some of the other Heart albums on vinyl. I've never had any of them on vinyl. Only ever owned CDs of them and would love to compare them. And of course, this was Superfan's purchase. This was Duran Duran's new album uh, entitled Future Past, and we listened to it together. Um, we did. Well, now, we didn't compare it to me. We didn't compare it to CD, because we don't have the CD, but we both enjoyed the album. We listened to it. Yeah. Um, I think um, this oh, is- it's on Red Vinyl. Yes, it is on Red Vinyl. I don't think we opened it and showed it. I'm not sure if we did on the initial video. If no, we didn't, we I'll it. If we didn't, I'll show it now. I didn't want to open it because it it's, you know, it's her record, not mine. It's mine. You can't open it. <laughs> but here it is on red vinyl. There we go. Very beautiful. And yeah, I thought I, I just enjoyed, I enjoyed it listening to it. I, it has, um, there's a big collaboration here. The guitarist on this album is, I can't pronounce his name, but he's the guitarist from Blur. And I think he he's involved in the, a lot of the songwriting, but I think that collaboration, there are other collaborators on this album as well who all contribute, but I think it really helped them create kind of a unique sound for this one, but still, you know, faithful to who they are. Um, this, yeah, this is a kind of a cool album. It combined a lot of elements of their early stuff, in my opinion. Yeah. It definitely did. Yeah, a lot of it felt very classic Duran Duran. Uh, yet at the same time, there was a certain, there was at times this kind of modern edginess to it without sounding like like being a sellout. Um, it just, it there was some dimension to it. Uh, there were, like I said, other, other collaborators on this, but I think the primary collaborator that I would point to is the guitarist for this album. He's not an official member of the band, but he played guitar on majority of the tracks and he helped co-write a lot of the, a majority of the songs with them too. He's involved in the songwriting. And once again, I can't pronounce his last name, uh, but he's the guitarist in Blur. So there we go. Um, so this leaves us now with the one that I was most curious about here, which is I found this, you know, original pressing of their Satanic Majesty's Request by the Rolling Stones and of course was surprised by how inexpensive it was, considering that normally I see it up on in store shelves up on the wall for a lot more. Um, 
there was, of course, it said somewhere, there was tape on the cover, of course. And I looked at the album and, it, you know, of course, I saw what looked like scratches and stuff. But I played it, not a skip on the whole thing. Didn't skip anywhere. Yeah, and it looked like it had a pretty big scratch on it. You did, yeah. But, you know, that happens sometimes. You can, you can play a used record with, with what appears to be scratches and it plays just fine. Other times you can play a record that appears to have no scratches, a used record, and you find it, it skips somewhere. And, you know, that's, that's just the way it is sometimes. Um, but I was really pleased with that, of course, that there were no skips on it. But I wanted to compare it to my anniversary edition. I have the anniversary edition, which has two LPs, uh, both stereo and mono remasters. And I decided, okay, this was stereo. So I compared it to the stereo disc. And you were there with me as I was yeah. listening. And your first thought was you said it sounded deeper, darker. Yeah. More bass. More bassy. Yeah, and that the and that the, the remastered version, the modern release, sounded brighter, much brighter. Yeah, and I I kind of feel like that's what when they're remastered. Mm-hmm. The modern aesthetic is bright. Yeah, I think uh, I think people just like hearing bright, uh, but also I think sometimes it's a way to when they hear a remaster, think, oh wow, because it's bright. Sometimes you know re some remasters are great. Some remasters, all they've done is just make it a little bit louder. It pops out more, um, and sometimes it's just brighter. You know, and of course, if you like bright, that's great. Uh, some people prefer deeper, darker. I actually, aside, like I said, there was some little snap crackly pop. There was a lot of snap crackly pop when I first put the needle down. But once the music started playing, that faded. And there was, of course, some expected, you know, noise in between tracks. But... Yeah, I mean, the, but, that piece of vinyl is, what, 50 years old? Yeah, something like that. And, and, um, and also, it's been played a lot. You know, it's yeah. definitely true, and it says somewhere. You know, it's been played a lot. Um... But, but considering it sounded really good. Yeah, I thought it sounded really good. I one thing I noticed was aside from this aside from the noise, the snap crackle, um I found myself actually preferring this over the anniversary stereo disc because it wasn't quite so bright. But also I found that the vocals I played like I compared the opening track, sing this all together. I found that the lead vocals at times um, were more forward on this, even though it's not a remix. I think the brightness somehow, the added brightness, whatever they did with the remaster, it pushed the vocals a little further back, the main vocals, and it felt a little more buried. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't audible, but it just, it just, I preferred how the vocals sounded on this version better, this older one. This older release. And um, I, I appreciated the darker sound, that it wasn't quite so bright. Um, I found I liked this better. Now, interesting note here. Before hearing this, when I listened to the two discs in the Anniversary Edition, which has the stereo and mono mixes, I preferred the mono mix over the stereo one. And I decided I'll compare this to the mono disc. And to me, this stereo version, this original 60s stereo version, and the mono record, the modern mono master, sounded more comparable to each other. Now, true, this was in stereo. You could definitely tell the difference with stereo mono. But the mono had a darker tone to it. And the vocals didn't feel so pushed back as they did on the stereo remaster. And, and like this original stereo pressing. So I felt that this and the, and the mono were very comparable to each other. I had always preferred hearing the mono remaster over the stereo remaster whenever I wanted to pull it out and play it. I would go for that. But I like this original stereo pressing over the newer stereo remaster. So interesting to find that out and compare. I love doing that. But really pleased. I mean, I originally just bought this just because, oh wow, it's the original hologram cover and it's only about 20 some dollars. It's really cheap, you know, cheaper than I've ever seen it before. I was gonna grab it just for the fun of having the physical package. The fact that the record played fine, aside from some, some 
expected, you know, snap, crackle, pop uh, at the beginning and maybe during some of the quieter passages, I thought it sounded really great. And I was really pleased with that. So there you have it. There you go. And we'll let Grogu sit there with the, re the record. And that's the comparison. Um, I would like to do more of these haul videos like this where I film the, the, you know, the haul and then come back a few weeks later with a thought and put it in one video. Let me know what you think of that. And as always, if you like what I'm doing here, be sure to click like so that the YouTube algorithm recognizes me. And be sure to uh, click subscribe if you haven't done so and click the bell notification so you never miss a video. And I uh, want to thank the, the mighty and powerful patron supporters who are helping me make more videos. If you'd like to be a patron supporter, go to patreon.com slash tjrtheoriginal. And until next time, this is TJ and... Superman and Superman. I. Superman. <laughs> We're saying bye, actually. Bye. Okay. Anyways, though, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.